were having a stimulating conversation about the Federal Reserve. In a truly ironic twist, when it comes to managing the economy, it's a bit hard to tell exactly where the buck stops. Is it up with the Federal Reserve's lending powers or Congress and the Treasury's power of the purse? With it looking increasingly likely that the turtle is about to beat the hare in congressional stimulus talks, I thought I'd take a moment to look at a Congressless Federal Recovery Plan. Now, a lot of commentators portray the Federal Reserve as engaging in Oprah Winfrey styles of stimulus. You get a billion dollars, and you get a billion dollars. Goldman Sachs, check under your seat. It's a billion dollars. Yay! Economics is fun. In fact, the Federal Reserve job is to provide loans to entities in order to get money into the economy. Loans that get paid back with interest. In fact, after the 2008 bailouts, the LA Times reported that the Federal Reserve earned $500 billion in profits off of those loans, which was turned over to the Treasury to fund the budget and pay down debt. Who is the Bank of America now? Now you might be thinking, well, this stimulus video took a weird turn right off the bat. But understanding how these loans work is the single most important puzzle piece for today's episode. Point is, the Federal Reserve lends money, and when they hand out money, they expect to get paid back with interest. This is important because with the lack of continued congressional aid, the lender of last resort has just turned into the only game in town. And who oh boy is it like trying to get a square peg through a solid piece of wood. Let's get as much debt as possible into the American people's hands. That doesn't have the same inspirational ring to it. Now, to his credit, Jerome Powell appears to be trying his hardest to get cash to the people. He opened up two new lines of credit: a mainstream lending facility and a municipal lending facility. Now, these two sets of loans have resulted in, well, the Federal Reserve sitting on hundreds of billions of dollars filed under to be lent. So, what's the problem? Well, the mainstream lending program has been flawed from day one. The Federal Reserve doesn't have the time or the personnel to go through tens of thousands of personal and small business loan applications each day. The idea was to give banks loans at lower rates under the understanding that they would conduct the credit checks and loan that money out to people and small businesses. So how did that work? Drum roll please. The Fed's Main Street Lending Program has the capacity to issue up to $600 billion in loans to mid-sized businesses. But for months, businesses and banks have said that the program's rules are so restrictive that companies desperately in need of a lifeline are being turned away. It's the classic paradox of, if you desperately need cash, you're probably the exact opposite of someone a bank or the Federal Reserve would want to lend money to. Because of that, of the $75 billion that has been set aside to cover any losses from the Main Street program, the program has lent out a total of $3 billion in loans on the balance sheet. The municipal lending program is going just as poorly though. In the spring, the Fed also announced a program that could issue up to $500 billion in loans to states and municipalities. But the Fed's program has issued only two loans to the state of Illinois and New York's Metropolitan Transport Authority for a total of $1.6 billion. Well, it's good to see that program isn't turning into a Republican caricature of municipal stimulus. New York MTA in Illinois, good to see the mafias being represented in stimulus stocks. The problem here is that desperate municipalities are credit risks, so any loan is going to come with an exceptionally high interest rate and short payback window. Because of these two programs complete lack of penetration, you get weird statements like the one Mnuchin just delivered on Fox Business News last Wednesday. I have over 200 billion of money that was allocated for the Federal Reserve facilities with the Treasury. I'm not going to need that. Now if you're watching this and saying, wait, you're telling me we're fighting over a new stimulus deal when a quarter of a trillion dollars is sitting in unused accounts? Yeah, kinda. 
The issue here is, all those funds have been allocated towards these clogged pipelines, so Congress can either reallocate that money or the Federal Reserve can get out the old plunger and start indebting more people and municipalities. Republican lawmakers have expressed openness to pass legislation to immediately repurpose these funds, but Pelosi has rejected that approach in favor of a more comprehensive bill. This debate is coming to a head right now because with Congress struggling to pass a more comprehensive bill like it's a kidney stone, people are starting to take a second look at these stalled, but funded, Federal Reserve lending programs. At the same time though, Jerome Powell has been taking the position of, seriously guys, don't look at me to solve this one. Our job is to make sure that the banks have enough cash to provide credit to qualify interests, and we've done an exceptional job doing that. Just look at the stock market. Nowadays the story is keeping up with the Dow Joneses. Ensuring structurally sound businesses who are victims of an economic downturn have access to cheap temporary loans takes radically different tools than the call to give money to a family who's struggling to make rent. The best we can do is lend money to your boss's boss and hope everything works out okay for you. Relying on the Fed to help struggling families is like trying to duct tape back together a Ming Voss. Well, it's holding together, but who boy are those cracks showing. His concern is that without fiscal aid in the coming months, it is unclear that the economy can avoid stalling, or even suffering a new downturn heading into 2021. This leaves the Fed to shoulder the entire burden of the US crisis response with imperfect tools. Now, I want to get a little more specific with his concerns because as you can probably imagine, there's some pretty substantive differences between a debt based recovery and a stimulus based recovery. His first concern is consumption. In a time of severe economic uncertainty, he is concerned that most people aren't going to want to take out loans to buy things. Recently in a press conference, he reported that consumption has held up well through August after the expiration of the expanded unemployment insurance benefits, indicating that savings from the transfer payments continue to support economic activity. Non-sarcastic woohoo! He continued by warning, Still, since it appears that many will undergo extended periods of unemployment, there is likely to be a need for further support. If people run out of cash, the only ones buying things from these companies will be the Federal Reserve. That as you can imagine is not a recipe for economic growth or a quick recovery. His other concern is more humanitarian. Too little support would lead to a weak recovery, creating unnecessary hardship for households and businesses. By contrast, the risks of overdoing it seem, for now, to be smaller. Even if policy actions ultimately prove to be greater than needed, they will not go to waste. In this case, he's looking at consistently almost non-existent inflation rates and interest rates on government loans that have bottomed out. From his logic, if there were ever a time to borrow money and spend it on the American public, well, right now it's a perfect storm. There's not much risk of inflation and borrowing is incredibly cheap. We should focus on avoiding unnecessary suffering from Americans. The downside risks just aren't that bad. The Fed wants to avoid a scenario like the one that unfolded in the aftermath of the financial crisis, when an initial bout of stimulus was followed by a quick move towards fiscal retrenchment, prolonging the pain of the recovery. Now until Congress acts on this issue, I just have one thing to say. Anyone who's ever said we should bail out Main Street the exact same way we bailed out the banks, be careful what you wish for. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also, if you want to see an episode I made about Illinois qualifying for that municipal bond program, click here. And other Fed actions, click here. 
Remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.